Welcome back to Midcap Radar. You know, there's been a bit of a bounce back, especially as far as the Nifty is concerned. Markets back about 22,000 level. But one stock that we are discussing today is Tata Technologies. Remember, uh, the you know the IPO price for this particular company was 500 rupees a share. The stock listed on November 30th, 2023, and intraday, uh, you know, it hit its lifetime high of 1400 rupees. But the stock since then has actually corrected more than 25% in just, you know, from the listing high. So it's been quite a bit of a significant, you know, coming back to earth as far as Tata Technology is concerned, but still significantly about where it actually, you know, where the IPO price was. But the company that we are discussing today is Intellect Design Arena. The stock has more than doubled in the last 12 months. The company recently bagged an order from Turkey's Wakif Pak International. The company's Arm Intellect Global Consultant Banking has also partnered with NCCL to implement the core banking system. We have Arun Jain, the Chairman and Managing Director of Intellect Design Arena, joining us to discuss their business outlook. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to the show. First up, sir, if you could talk about this particular order win itself, you know, how does it add to your revenues? Uh, if you could help us with some numbers. Yeah, so I think all of you know they are the core banking is the biggest space in a uh, product business where there are 10 players from Temino's and Thought Machine are the two key players. Vakif Bank is a bank from Turkey who has chosen our technology. The beauty of this is that after OTP Bank, which I talked to you during the last conversation where we won the deal over the 10 years transformation of their bank, it's another bank who has chosen us for the, our technology over Thought Machine or Temino's in a core banking space. So that's a significant uh, importance that we are get, we are taking the leadership position from a technology perspective when we say eBank.ai, which is event-led microservices open finance platform. So this wave of open finance platform, which is driven from Europe, is now catching the wave. It has gone into Middle East. It has come to the Dubai open finance platform. So there we are seeing these are the validation of our strategy. So it's not mm. only the win which is making a difference, mm. but it's making us va valuable for next five years. Okay, that is very interesting. Mr. Jain, in that case, since you're saying it's a big opportunity, can you give us a size of uh, the deal or can you give us a size of how big this opportunity could be? Are you seeing multiple deal wins in this particular space itself? And is it margin accretive, this particular project that has come by? Um, will you be able to maintain that 25% margin guidance that you've given? That's right. So I think these are all the deals which are coming now are coming at a 60% margin levels when the new deals comes in which improved the margin from 22% to the 20.6% uh, was earlier margin. It will further improve after the gem has gone away. So our margin will come closer by two, three more percent on EBITDA margin. So these deals are very, very important uh, from winning perspective. But to give a context to the investor, my email.ai, which we launched in Middle East, I was there last week in Middle East. I was finding that there's a huge reception of open finance platform which is creating a tailwinds for us and creating a bigger moat because we are AI plat embedded AI along with microservices cloud platform is positioning us in a very different league from a product perspective. Okay. So we are able so to... How much Yes, sir. Yeah. For for benefit of investors, and since you're talking about it being such a big uh, deal as well, wanted to understand how much will it add to your deal pipeline? Uh, is this a large order? Uh, will you see more such orders coming in uh, from different uh, regions? Yeah, so if you look at core banking, we won three orders in Australia region. We won three orders, one in Bulgaria, one in Hungary, one in Turkey. So in Europe, getting our footprint there, then we are talking in Canada, three, four deals in Canada. We are talking to, so it's getting into the advanced market besides the deal in India where we are winning on the wealth platform with SBI, Kotak and IFL has gone live. So it's a, a phenomenal area where open finance platform is applied in core banking, lending, wealth, global transaction banking and insurance space. So these five spaces are basically five different companies which are working with embedded AI and microservices-based architecture, which is very, very... Right, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, well, you know, just to uh, get us back, you know, on track with a bit of numbers that we want, um, in the last quarter, 
you actually failed out the government e marketplace platform uh, so yeah. we understand in q3 there was a one time impact can you quantify yeah. the impact that you faced in q3 q4 can you tell us you know what will be the revenue dip on account of that will you be able to make up for that you know with other services kicking in and also fy24 fy25 can you leave us with the revised guidance on account of this particular deal closing down yeah so as i mentioned government e marketplace was not profitable business for us it was a good service which we created a platform for bringing a transparency in india indian environment so that was my personal commitment to invest into the government e marketplace but on the revenue side on top line perspective obviously we lost close to 6 and 1/2 million dollars from last quarter to this quarter but i guided that we'll be able to maintain the same revenue pool uh, which was around 600 around 625 crore number around that number we should be able to maintain in the this quarter by garnering more deals for covering up the government marketplace i okay. hope this had it does it does are uh, your net dso's or the day sales outstanding it improved in quarter 3 by 2 days what's the outlook going forward do you think there will be much more improvement here because it did see challenge in the past because of higher proportion coming in from the indian market what's the take here now that's true some number will improve uh, at what pace uh, we can recover the money from government marketplace that's a biggest uh, 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 hangover on the dso otherwise if you take away gem dso's other dso will further improve uh, from a uh, all over other geographies so we are operating in advanced market dso's are much less much less than 90 days in advanced market so emerging market puts a pressure but it will be improving as we go along so in the recent analyst meet you know post q3 you've um, you know guided analysts saying that you would be able to reach ebitda margins of 25% you know in fy25 that's a very steep pass from where you are currently you know what is giving you the guidance that you'll be able to increase by such a large uh, you know margin trajectory so which are the key deals that are kicking in and also does the closure of the government e marketplace also help in going ahead and improving the margin trajectory yeah so you are answering yourself so government e marketplace will improve our margin by 2 to 2.5% because of going away of that and rest of the margin will come from natural product company because our it's not headcount based business some more revenue come from the licenses and amc is then license link revenue of partner cloud numbers so we are still on a lower end of the spectrum on a margin compared to flexcube or oracle financial services so we have a potential to go substantially closer to higher numbers as we go along but in this phase of investment we would keep the trajectory at 25% level okay all right mr jain thank you so much for joining us today and uh, uh, speaking with us about the new deals the new opportunity areas and the outlook going forward that's about intellect design arena stock has surged around 140% in last one year we'll slip into a short break now on the other side we'll focus on some stocks on the move stay tuned for that